So brethren, we have another tribe, of course, the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin was, you might remember, uh, Rachel's second son, and when she delivered him, she died short. Well, she died at birth, it seems, at birth. Uh, and Benjamin was, the, uh, of course, the uh, brother of Joseph. Now, Jacob also prophesied in Genesis chapter 49. Jacob, of course, prophesied about Benjamin. And in verse 27, he says, Benjamin shall ravin, or tear, would be the word, as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. Now, of course, this prophecy, as it happens to all the other prophecies related to the modern descendants of Israel, will occur in the last days, as we know from verse 1. Now, in first type, what we find in the Bible about those who were from the tribe of Benjamin, we find Ehud, E-H-U-D, the second judge of Israel. He's mentioned in Judges chapter 3, verses 12 to 30. We find that Ehud, the second judge of Israel, single-handedly killed Moab's king Eglon and led a great Israelite victory, bringing eight years peace. So we find that, and you'll find something interesting about the uh, about Ehud. Ehud was left-handed, and uh, it's quite it's it's really written there in the Judges chapter three, when you can find. Also, what we can also find is that Benjamin also devoured forty thousand Israelites in two days of fighting. You might remember the story from Judges chapter twenty. Again, I'll just make reference to the Bible verses to save the time. In Judges 20, you have there were horrible crime committed by the tribe of Benjamin, and therefore they were, you know, they were almost extinct, almost extinguished, almost annihilated as a tribe. So they devoured 40,000 Israelites in two days of fighting. Judges 20 tells us about that. So, you know, it's a wolf in the morning, he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. We have another Benjamite in the Bible history, well known. And his name, his name is Saul. Saul, he was the first, as you remember, he was the first king of the twelve tribes. Later, he was succeeded by David. And Saul, a Benjamite, he devoured the Ammonites. In First Samuel chapter 11, you'll find, verses 1 through 11, you'll find how he devoured the Ammonites. He also devoured and defeated many of Israel's neighboring nations, as you can read in First Samuel chapter 14 and verse 47. Now, there are other ferocious Benjamites, ferocious as wolves, that we find in the Bible. In 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 23, and 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 30, we have Shimei, one of the Benjamites. Uh, he is also found in 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 5 through 13, and in 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 44 through 46. We also find in 2 Samuel chapter 20, we found Sheba, another ferocious Benjamite. But you see, in the evening, what happened in the evening is that Esther and Mordecai saved their people in Persia. You remember the story about Esther and how they saved their people. It's recorded in the book of Esther, chapter 7 and chapter 9. Now, uh, don't be confused Esther and Mordecai uh, it is well written and clearly stated in the book of Esther that they were of the tribe of Benjamin and that shouldn't surprise us because you remember that the uh, United Kingdom of Israel after the death of Solomon was divided into two kingdoms and then the northern kingdom was subdued by the Assyrians and the southern kingdom remained in part, well, it remained in existence for 136 years more, and then in 586 before Christ, it was destroyed and it was enslaved by the Babylonians. And then the Babylonian Empire eventually was defeated by the Persians. And when the Persians, then Persians, of course, took over the Babylonian territories, and of course, by extension, they took over uh, the exiled. Jews who were living in Babylon. So the Jews who were in Babylon, in exile, they just fell under the Persian rule. And the Persians were very much 
very much in favor of the Jews, as, as you remember, it was the Persian king who allowed them to return to Judea and rebuild Jerusalem and rebuild the Jewish cities there. That was the golden age, we might say, because Ezra and Nehemiah took the opportunity to return to the Judea and to establish the true Old Testament religion. They countered the Samaritans, who were populated a century and a half uh, prior to the return of the Jews, they were, re they were populated there by the Assyrians, and therefore, uh, well, centuries or two centuries, anyway, they were populated there by the Assyrians, and they got mixed, the, those pagan Babylonians who were resettled there in the place of the exiled Israelites, they got mixed with the remnants of the Israelitish people, and they, they formed what we can call a, f a, 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 a forgery, of Old Testament religion. That's why we'll be talking about the canon one of these days, brethren, because the Bible canon and how the Bible became a book is very interesting. That's why Ezra and Nehemiah took uh, great efforts to preserve the Old Testament. Ezra was the one who canonized all the books of the Old Testament, but he copied them uh, with a different uh, in a different letters that were accepted in Persian Empire at that time. And they were also, those letters were very unique and they were used by the exiled Jewish community in Babylon. And that by using those particular letters, it was done because the Samaritans were already forging and falsifying the Old Testament scriptures. So in order to for the people to be uh, assured that they have the authorized and God-inspired scriptures, Ezra took that you know, opportunity and canonized all the books of the Old Testament and copied them in that Babylonian, we can say Babylonian square, uh, square script that was well known by the Babylonian Jews. That's why, and then, you know, that's why those, uh, all those uh, copied, uh, copied scrolls were held in Judea. They were also copied later, you know, and spread throughout the Roman Empire eventually. That's how the Old Testament was really preserved because of great Ezra's work. So Ezra was the one actually who was so righteous that people said that he was he was called in the Jewish community as second Moses. And people believed that if God didn't send Moses with the law that Ezra would be the one who would have brought the law uh, of God to the uh, to the house of Israel. Those are interesting parts of history that you know we need to know and they will help us again understand uh, how God preserved his word. In any case, uh, I was talking about the northern kingdom. So the southern kingdom remained and you remember there were two tribes there, the Jewish tribe and the tribe of Benjamin. And therefore Esther and Mordecai were, you know, of the uh, they were of the uh, of the uh, of the tribe of Benjamin and they lived among the Jewish people. They practiced you know, Old Testament religion. They were counted to be Jews ethnically, but they were, all, they were specifically of the uh, tribe of Benjamin. So in the evening, they saved their people. And there is also another Benjamite. He mentions himself. It's the Apostle Paul. He mentions himself you know, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 5, in Romans chapter 16, verse 1. He does mention himself as Benjamite. And you do remember certainly from the Bible how ferociously he persecuted the church. It's, you know, his, his own admission is there in Acts chapter 22, verse 4. He speaks about persecution of the church in Galatians chapter 1, verse 13. In Acts chapter 26, he also speaks about how he used to be ferocious. So uh, he's a Benjamite as well. That shouldn't surprise us again, because you know the tribe of Benjamin, as you remember, remained as one as God. It was God's providence to remain one of the Israelite tribes with the tribe of Judah. Now that's what we have in the Bible. Now we're having now uh, we're having some other interesting information about the later descendants of Benjamin, and it shouldn't probably surprise you about who they are, the, who they were in earlier centuries they were the vikings famous vikings during the viking age when the northmen were at the peak of their power and glory i'm reading from louise dickinson rich's book the first book of the vikings page 14 their colonies the colonies of the vikings stretched from inside russia 
along the North Atlantic almost to America. They, their influence reached even further from the warm Mediterranean to the Arab countries where they went to trade to the edge of the Arctic ice pack where they hunted seals and wal walruses. They controlled all the known seas and much of the land these waters touched upon. They were for a short th three centuries perhaps the most influential people in the world. And no wonder, brethren, uh, there are certainly remnants of Vikings even in America. America was not discovered by Columbus. That's one of the biggest lies in your American history. America was discovered long before Christ. America was discovered, brethren, by ancient Phoenicians who were in alliance with King David and his son Solomon later. So therefore you'll find inscriptions and monuments in America, in Hebrew, in Phoenicians, in the land of Carthaginians, in the language of Carthaginians, and also from the people of Tyre, the city of Tyre. Because the city of Tyre and Phoenicians and the united Israel, unified kingdom of Israel under David, were in alliance. And they were a sea power. And they did discover America long before Columbus. There is a, I might, I have mentioned a book to you, America Before Christ by Barry Fell, I think is the name of that guy. You'll find that book quite informative and very important. Uh, you know, there is that verse in John chapter 8, 32, which says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, brethren. I find that to be actually not only referring to the doctrinal truth and the uh, truth when it comes to the true faith and the true faith, you know, faith of Christ, I find it true even when it comes to secular history when it comes to secular history even god it seems in his mercy he does uh release us from all sorts of uh, wrong dogmas that are foisted upon us and forced upon us by our educational systems around the world so we have the vikings now of course, as you know, the uh, Vi who are the Vikings? Well, Vikings are uh, ancestors of modern Norwegians. So we have now, we have finally identified who are modern, modern Benjamites today. Now, of course, part of Benjamin you can find also in other nations, uh, and uh, particularly when it comes to the nation nation of Denmark, you can find because Denmark also participated in that. So there will be some. Even though Denmark, yes, their name tells us that they are from the tribe of Dan, but nevertheless, that tribe dominates in Denmark. But you know, some traces of other tribes you can find in Denmark, and so you can find them in Norway. In Norway, so Benjamin does dominate in Norway. So the modern Norwegians today are actually Benjamites. And whatever the reason for leaving Norway, the Norsemen terrorized the coasts of Europe for nearly 300 years. While the Vikings, you know, were on their expeditions in Western Europe, they met Christian people and learned about the new religion. I'm reading from Vincent and Ruth Malmstrom, Life in Europe, Norway. The Christian religion was gradually accepted by the Viking chieftains. They ordered their men to give up the raids on Western Europe and to settle down in peace. When Christianity and the Bible were introduced into Norway, Norwegian churchmen began to read and write using the Roman alphabet. In this way, they developed a written language. After the year 1300, the fortunes of the kingdom did not fare so well. One by one, the distant colonies were lost. So you see, Norway, brethren, did ravin or tear as a wolf because of the Vikings. Because the Vikings spread on all sides like fearful wolves, robbed, tore and slaughtered not only beasts of burden, sheep and oxen, but even priests and deacons. Three Tricare, the Viking, page 79. You see, they were like Raven like wolves. The Viking, you know, the Viking ships rather than traveled in wolf packs and made quick plundering attacks on coastal settlements. Then they sailed away with their spoils just as quickly, just like wolves. And these predatory bands pillaged coastal settlements in Europe. And there is a cartoon which you might have about the Hogar the Hogar the Horrible, we call him. And there are also cartoons about Asterix and Obelisks, you know, and the Viking Viking heroes. They're well popular here in Serbia. I'm not sure about America, but possibly you have seen or you might have those cartoons as well. And uh, that's 
that's the uh, story about the Vikings who were descendants of Benjamin. So they pillaged, you know, coastal settlements in Europe, and in this case, the mother, Rachel, was right in naming when she, you know, when she gave birth to Benjamin in Genesis 35, verse 18, naming her son Ben-Oni. Ben-Oni, or son of my sorrow. Why? Because he did devour the prey in his early history, the morning. That was the early history of Norway, you see, Vikings. Now, Benjamin later replaced the lost Joseph in Jacob's affection, and so became his son of my right hand. Genesis chapter 42. So Jacob renamed him, so he was the son of my sorrow. He was son of my right hand. So that was the early history of Norway in the morning. But at night, now he is called Benjamin, son of my right hand. Uh, at night, he shall divide the spoil. Which, brethren, could refer, of course, to the later history of Norway, which could refer to the fact that in 1960, Norway became one of the founding members of the European Free Trade Association. Or it could also refer to the fact that in World War II, did you know this? In World War II, the, Nor the Norwegian merchant fleet played a vital role in aiding the Allies. You'll find this in American Academic Encyclopedia, Volume 14, page 264. Or... It could refer to the fact that the Nobel Prize, Peace Prize each year since 1901 has been awarded by a committee of five persons to be elected by the Norwegian Storting, Norwegian Parliament. Now, of course, brethren, it is also true that Norway has lost most of the lands and territory taken during the Viking period. Because Norway, as you see, in our modern times is not known as a colonizing power. And the same is with Denmark. Denmark, a country which participated in the Viking raids just as much as Norway, later also divided the spoil. And let me tell you something about Denmark. According to what I can hear from the Serbian diaspora, brethren, Denmark, at least to my understanding, is really a, an example of perfect social justice. The social justice there and the care taken by uh, of the citizens by the state is it's unbelievable and i can give you the, some details perhaps later so you know when we speak about prosperity and social justice forgive me all of you who are in america but i could not take america as being a perfect example because there are plenty of homeless people in america plenty of people and there are various now uh, discrepancies and differences between various classes of people in America, but in, in Denmark, that's not the case. In Denmark, have you ever heard of homeless people in Denmark? You haven't. Have you ever heard of any bad news from Denmark? I remember the latest news I, re I read in the Serbian paper was uh, about the uh, Danish princess or queen taking her child or her children to kindergarten and by riding them on a bicycle so of course to our you know to our press that was something amazing you know why because of course we are we used to be people ruled by various dictators and you know we have these elitistic people and you know how can a princess ride a bike and, and ride her children to the kindergarten but you know in denmark that's perfectly normal you see so denmark brethren is an amazing country when it comes to social justice and everything is very available, plenty of st stuff is available, good quality stuff, perhaps not such a great variety as in America. America, I think, has unsurpassed variety of all sorts of things and, and, and merchandise. But the, uh, uh, the availability to common people of good quality stuff in Denmark is absolutely amazing. So anyway, Denmark, you see, by 1750s, Denmark had suffered defeat several times and had been stripped of nearly all its territories on the Scandinavian Peninsula. In 1814, as France neared the defeat, Denmark was forced to cede Norway to Sweden. In 1848, the predominantly German inhabitants of the duchies of Schleswig and Holstein, which had been under Danish administration since 1773, revolted against Danish rule. And although the rebels failed, 
Prussia and Austria joined forces in 1864 to defeat Denmark, and Denmark then had to relinquish control of the two duchies. Now, in the early 19th century, foreign countries had increasingly objected to Denmark's toll on ships passing through the Oresund, and finally, in 1857, the tolls were abolished. Now, Denmark also had some territories, Denmark Caribbean Islands, known as the Danish West Indies. They were sold to the United States in 1916. In 1918, Iceland was granted home rule. In 1944, Iceland, then occupied by Allied troops, declared its independence of Denmark and became a republic. At the end of the war, Denmark became a charter member of the United Nations, and Denmark joined the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, famous NATO, and the Council of Europe in 1949, and in 1952 helped to organize the Nordic Council. Denmark is also, you know, was member also of the European Free Trade Association from 1960 to 1972. Now, interestingly, during World War II, the Danish merchant marine went into Allied hands and assisted in the prosecution of the war. You can learn this from Collier's Encyclopedia, Volume 8, page 116. In 1953, so we're talking again about the, in the evening, the later history of the descendants of Benjamin. In 1953, a new constitution ended the Upper House of Parliament and the constitution also made famous Greenland a province rather than a colony of Denmark. Now, I mentioned to you the left hands and the uh, Benjamites are characteristically left-handed. You can find it in Judges chapter 20, verses 15 and 16. There was a great warrior, a great band of warriors from Benjamin. Who, uh, and you can find that they were very skillful with slingshots and uh, arrows and bows, and they were all left-handed. Ehud, as I mentioned to you, was left-handed. And the Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 12, it's Moses now prophecy about Benjamin. So Moses said, The beloved of the Eternal shall dwell in safety by him, and the Eternal shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his his shoulders, or he shall dwell between his hills, or between his boundaries. And this indeed has been Benjamin's lot since the Benjamites, the Benjamites portion of land included in the promised land, the temple of God. Because brethren, Mount Moriah was in Benjamite territory. You can find it in Judges chapter 1, verse 21, in Joshua 18, verse 11 and 16. Mount Moriah the mount on which I think Abraham was supposed to sacrifice Isaac. And on that same very spot, of course, the, uh, the Jerusalem temple was built. Benjamin's territory also included cities that you know from the Bible, Jericho, Bethel, Mizpah, Ramach, Gibeon, and Jerusalem. Now, interesting enough, the Norwegian merchant fleet of almost 5 million tons was made available to the Allies during the Battle of the Atlantic in 1941. More than 40% of the tonnage entering British ports was on Norwegian registered ships. I don't know if you knew that, but that's another interesting piece of information from Merit Students Encyclopedia, Volume 13, page 525. Now, in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 1, we have a scripture that scripture tells us that Benjamin to leave Jerusalem temporarily and so we know that Benjamin must have been living in this city area. And indeed even if you google out about, about Jerusalem you'll find in their historical record that Vikings did live and rule Jerusalem for a while. Now Paul was a Benjamite, also many of the other apostles were, brethren. This might come to you as a surprise. Because even when the kingdom of Judah which was made up of Judah and Benjamin, was taken captive, we know that 70 years later, some Benjamites returned to Jerusalem. And you'll find that in Ezra chapter 1 and in verse 5, that there were some Benjamites who returned. Now, since that time, there have always been Benjamites in the Jerusalem area. And this must be the case, because otherwise, how could there be a time of the Gentiles in the future when Gentiles will tread Jerusalem underfoot unless Jerusalem in, uh, is now 
in the hands of the Israelites. So there are still remnants of Benjamin there in Jerusalem, brethren. Even in the Viking Age, that will be 8th to 10th century AD, we see that Vikings settled temporarily in the Jerusalem area. Now, being from the same mother, Rachel, as Joseph, we should, of course, naturally expect Norwegians to have a close relationship with the British and Americans who are descendants of Joseph. And indeed, that is the case. Uh, as far as Great Britain, Great Britain used to take about two-fifths of all experts from Norway. I'm not sure if that's the case even today, but anyway, there's a close relationship. And the U.S. is an important trading nation with Norway. Norway is in NATO as well. Now, you'll find it interesting that Norway is not part of the European Union, which is quite amazing. But it shouldn't amaze us, brethren, if we know now the uh, origin of Norwegians. They are an Israelitish nation. And I wouldn't be surprised, this is not a dogma, and this is not a prophecy, I'm just speculating. I wouldn't be surprised if the European Union, the current European Union, eventually might lose all the Israelitish nations, who would, like British, be very fond of their sovereignty, because, you know, their sovereignty is going to be drastically curbed by the coming United States of Europe and the coming European dictator. So I wouldn't be surprised if those, you know, freedom-loving people might join why just decide to leave european union now of course germany is not going to forgive them that and germany is not going to like it but germany will impose its own economic yoke of bondage upon those people just as hitler did brethren in the second world war the yoke of bondage was upon those people there and they were not taken into captivity now we know with the descendants of joseph american britain sadly what we know from the Bible, they'll be completely destroyed, their nations completely destroyed, and they'll be taken into captivity out of their lands. But what might happen is, again, that Israelitish nations might all leave the European Union. Because the final resurrection of the Roman Empire, led by Germany, has to be Gentile, brethren. has to be made up of Gentiles. Predominantly Gentiles, because, you know, Germans are a Gentile nation, and, you know, there are plenty of Gentiles now in the European Union. So Norway is not part of the European Union right now. Norwegian currency, Corona, crown, is a very strong one, and I think uh, due to wisdom of their royal family, uh, which saved all sorts of resources, every Norwegian, from what we, can, we read recently here in the Serbian press, every Norwegian is very rich, <laughs> by what the state of Norway has said for him and her. That's quite interesting. So they're not part of the European Union. And that shouldn't surprise us because, you see, they're close to Joseph. And descendants of Joseph, Britain, England, left European Union. Americans are not having much great relationship with the European Union, especially with the current Chancellor of Germany. And therefore, you know, Norway, and Norway, interestingly enough, a close ally, of course, to his brother, Joseph, Britain and America, Norway is not part of the European Union and probably will not ever join the European Union because, you know, by now they should have had and certainly had had plenty of opportunities to join the European Union, but they're not part of it. Now, I mentioned to you that you'll be surprised that there were some other Benjamites, but in Christ's 11 disciples, do you remember where did they come from? They came from Galilee. They were Galileans, except for one. The one was Judah of Kerioth. Now, Kerioth is mentioned. Kerioth is mentioned in Nehemiah chapter 11, verse 31 through 35, and in Joshua 15, verse 25. But all the disciples of Jesus, his 11 disciples, his original 11 apostles, were from Galilee. And you have numerous several scriptures that tell us about that but Luke 22:59 Matthew 26:69 through 73 John 7:52 and 53 Now Galileans brethren were not Jews because we read in John chapter 7 verse 1 that after these things Jesus walked in Galilee for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him Now thus we know that you know Galilee was Benjamite and Levite only. Because plenty of tribe of Levite, they didn't have their own territory. Many of them also moved into the southern kingdom and remained with the house of Judah. So basically the kingdom of Judah was made up of 
uh, you know, Jews, Benjamites, and many Levites. And you remember also from the Bible, and we're speaking about the tribes of Israel, you remember that Jesus was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel, and those two tribes, Benjamite and Levite, were the only Israelites in the Promised Land besides Judah. So Galilee was looked down upon by Jews, showing that they were not the same people. You find that in John chapter 1, verse 42, and John chapter 7, verse 53, how the Jews looked down, you know, looked down upon the Galilee. And Benjamin, by the way, from Nehemiah 11, verse 31 through 35, we read that Benjamin took the cities north of Judah. So the Galileans were not Jews. They were Benjamites. And all, interestingly enough, all Christ's 11 disciples were Galileans. They were from the tribe of Benjamin. And you can see that's how the tribe of Benjamin has given a great contribution to modern Christianity, brethren. And I'll tell you something else as well. In my ancestry, I've got left-handed people. My great-grandmother, Matilda, she was, uh, I think she was uh, one of those hidden Jews. She was a devout Catholic and lived in Croatia, but I think she was a hidden Jew from her features, I could see. But she was left-handed, and it was passed down all to my mother as well. My mother is also left-handed. I'm not left-handed, but, you know, I've got left-handed people. So it means that that's why here in Serbia uh, I'm called by the brethren Benjamite and again you know the tribe of Benjamin has given great things and great contributions to Christianity I hope that uh, perhaps because of that origin perhaps that's why I've been put by God in this position to also give whatever modest contribution I can give to the true Christianity well now we know who are modern descendants of Benjamin it's Norway and of course you'll find parts of that parts of that uh, of that tribe elsewhere in Scandinavia including Denmark but Norway is the primary primarily Norwegians are the primarily descendants of modern Benjamin